Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another Chromebook Classroom episode. And today with me, I have two friends from our super amazing inclusive ed team. With me today, I have Nick and I have Antonio. Uh, good morning, gentlemen. How are you? Good morning, Trish. Hi, Trish. How are you? I'm well. And do you want to take a minute just to introduce yourselves to everyone in case they don't know who you are yet? Absolutely, Absolutely. yes. Uh, my name is Nick. I am one of the inclusive programming consultants here with uh, Learning Services. And my name is Antonio, and I am also one of the inclusive programming consultants uh, with Learning Services. So here's what's great. Today we get two brains for the price of one because we're going to be talking a little bit about brain science and learning, but mostly from the perspective of UDL, that universal design for learning, and how we can use some of these digital tools on not only our teacher Chromebooks, but our student Chromebooks, just to really enhance those means of expression, representation, and engagement. So Nick, you're going to lead us off today because you've got a really great free, easy tool that anyone can use that you're going to show us. All right, thanks Trish, I'll kick it off here. Uh, so Book Creator is the tool that we're going to be exploring. And Book Creator is, um, it's been around for a while. Like I know I was first introduced to Book Creator probably like 10 years ago. And uh, it was introduced to me as like a pre-K kindergarten based tool and it seemed pretty awesome. I was a grade six teacher thought let's bring it into my classroom and see and again the kids loved it so um, we're hoping that it's a tool that regardless whether you're pre-k k elementary junior high school regardless what your background is there is a purpose for this particular tool uh, as a teacher i love free i also love user friendly and easy to use and as an inclusive consultant i love accessibility right so there's all kinds of features within this tool that uh will enable access for all kinds of learners. And that's the avenue we're gonna kind of focus, that it's great for all kids, but there's accessibility pieces that I guess line up as to why it is great for all kids. So, um, in particular, we're gonna, I think, go from the purpose of, it's, it's an educational technology, so it enhances learning for lots of different kids, but for some kids, there's aspects of it, aspects of it that are almost more assistive tech oriented. It's got things that um, they need to access learning. Uh, and, you know, for me, Within this particular role, going into lots of elementary classrooms, one really common area where lots of kids struggle is writing. Um, in particular, sort of traditional writing tasks. Nothing wrong with pencil and paper and pen and paper for most kids, uh, but for some of our kids, that can be an incredibly challenging and frustrating task. And so Book Creator is one of those tools, whether it's a learning portfolio, whether it's a journal, uh, whether it's a comic strip, there's all kinds of pieces within it that can kind of remove some of those barriers um, and allow them to just multiple means of representation, multiple means of expression, just those UDL principles to show their learning. So, and so you're gonna jump uh, us in, you're gonna show yeah. us some examples, right? Because this is like, I could watch this video today and I could try this with my students this afternoon. That's how easy this is, right? That's the hope. That's what we're hoping we can, <laughs> we can successfully show. So. Uh, Nick, can I add something for a yeah, second? Cause I'm coming it. from, you were talking about you're from the uh, elementary lens. I come from the high school lens. I didn't use this when I started teaching. Um, I learned this a couple years ago when I when I came into this role. Um, and what I loved about this uh, feature and having learned a lot more about it this year is regardless of what level you teach, uh, the idea is that this is this can be utilized for all students. So I often get uh, posed with the question, well, how do I how do I make this work for this one kid? That's not necessarily the way, the viewpoint you want to take. You want to, this is a great tool to utilize for all students and you could take an assignment that's already pre-built and just add in the uh, assessment piece of using Book Creator. While you teach it to the whole group, your one targeted student that you might be utilizing or requiring it for is also part of the general population as opposed to you saying, hey, little Nick, take this Book Creator and do your assignment on here, but everyone else is going to be doing this. So this, this adds the accessibility piece for everyone, but you also are gonna reach that targeted student. And I feel like a lot of times, um, and again, this might be a high school thing, but in high school, we get pretty set in our ways. So this is just <laughs> a different way of uh, providing some fun or a fun way of doing uh, a classroom assignment assessment, uh, fill in the blank. So sorry, I wanted to interject that. I love that. I love that. And a little pre a little preview. Nick's going to be sharing with us some resources at the end and high school resources are included. So take it away, Nick. You're going to uh, do a little TV magic for us. All right. Let's do the best that I can here. So I've uh, just okay. So as you can see, this is the Book Creator website itself, uh, which we'll come back to in a moment. Um, I created an account. It's super easy. It took like 30 seconds to one minute to create a free account. Free is always good. Um, and I'm going to actually just bypass right from the actual Book Creator uh, site, which we'll visit shortly, right into the actual uh, where I've logged in. Um, so 
let's create a book. We've got two learning goals today. Uh, learning goal one is simply to create a simple book creator book. Uh, and learning goal two, tool two, uh, tool two is that <laughs> we're going to just be exploring some of those ac accessibility features uh, while we create our book. So let's select add new book. So right away, you'll see there's tons of templates to choose from. I'm going to just keep it simple for the sake of today and just choose a uh, landscape orient orientated book. So right off the bat, uh, automatically, there is, it gives you three pages to work with. Uh, and you can certainly add pages, but uh, let's start with the cover here. So I want to point out, these are the three big icons when you're creating a book creator book. And this is part of the beauty, beauty of it is the user friendliness of it. It's just real simple. You master these three, you can basically create anything you want. Um, so the first option here is that you can simply add an item. So when you select that, you can import things directly from, uh, well, let's take a look. Let's select import. Um, search for images. Uh, that's probably the primary feature when you think about book creators, images, you know, pictures can, you know, can say a thousand words. So I'm going to select uh, bee. I'm actually going to select bumblebee because they don't get enough love. Sorry, Trish, I know you love the honeybees. But I love it, yeah, in my backyard beehives. <laughs> does. I got bee hotel, so we're both in the bee world here. So I'm going to just like a picture of a bumblebee. I feel left out. Yeah. So. What's great about those pictures too, Nick, is when you do the search in Book Creator, it's a Creative uh, Commons copyright free image. So you don't have to be worried about your students sort of like ripping off those, you know, Google images. These are images they're allowed to use for school. Okay. That's a really nice, that's good to know, Trish. So there you go. <laughs> uh, something I just learned. So, uh, We've got our, 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 we've added our image here, our bumblebee picture. Now, what you'll notice is once you add anything, this eye inspector button is what really kind of brings it to life. So now that I've actually added a particular image, if I select this eye, um, there'll be a few different pieces uh, that I can further enhance this image. But before I do that, I want to go back to the add option because I want to add, uh, show some of their features that are within here. So again, I can access my camera. There's the option to select pen, but let's just go into text. Now, some of our kids are typers, some of our kids aren't. Um, in the event that I do happen to be a typer, uh, let me just type in a quick sentence here. So I'm going to say bumblebees pollinate just for the sake of time here. Um, and now I've embedded some text. Now, again, many things I can do with that text. As long as it's highlighted, as long as it's highlighted, the inspector button can bring features to life. So again, there's your standard options. I can bold, I can, I can italicize, whatever I might want to be. I can increase the size, I can change the alignment, um, color, tons of options here. But I want to focus in on uh, the font piece. So tons of options, uh, just from a visual perspective. But we're looking at this as much as possible from that accessibility piece. So. Um, Open Dyslexic is one of the options. I didn't know Open Dyslexic was built right in, so I don't even have to have the extension. I can just use Open Dyslexic right here in the book already. Oh, that's so great. Nick, can I jump in and talk yeah, about sure. Open Dyslexic a little bit? Um, I, I love the fact that uh, it is built in, which is great. You don't have to add an extension anymore. Um, I feel like accessibility uh, features are more and more being just incorporated into programs, which makes it universally uh, easy to add. Um, and just keep in mind that uh, uh, the purpose of any accessibility tool um, is that they're for all students. And I'm going to say that a lot, all students, because if it's universal, it means that anybody has access to it, anybody can use it. Um, obviously, if you are going to be creating, um, so this, for the purpose of a book creator, it's for a student creating um, something that they're going to present to you. Um, but as a teacher, if we take a small little mind shift, if I'm creating an assignment, the auto text is usually like something like Times New Roman. So if you make the small shift of just changing it to an open dyslexic font, um, you not only can create all of your assignments like that in under three seconds of a change, like Nick just found open dyslexic really quick there, but for all students, they still require, they still require you to put some type of font in. Right. So for the majority of students, they're going to just be reading the page, just like if you had Times New Roman or uh, Calibri or any of the other fonts that you might have chosen. If you use Open Dyslexic, though, there's that one or two students in your class that automatically have a door opened up for them and you've done nothing different besides changing a font. So just a small little mind shift. Um, and just a little bit about what Open Dyslexic is, if you don't know, um, it is a font that is designed to make it easier for a dyslexic individual to distinguish. Um, it uh, helps reducing errors and reading effort by changing the sticks and tails on uh, some of the letters. The letters would be like the letter B, D, P, 
and Q, um, and it helps reduce the varied length of the letter so that students kind of have an easier time to read them. So again, from a programming perspective, it's a simple little change that everybody can do. It takes, it takes minimal effort, and you will just open a door for some of those students in your class without even knowing. A lot of those students won't say, hey, thanks, Nick. I really appreciate you doing that for me. But yeah, sorry. Is that a, that's all I got, Nick. <laughs> no, thanks for that ad-lib, Antonio. That's, uh, that's, uh, that's much appreciated. Kind of enhanced that particular, kind of provided some additional information pieces as to why. There's always a purpose and a meaning. That's what we want, right? Is, is that purpose, that meaning, and, and actually more so in this case, access, right? So that open dyslexic, there, there's an intentionality to that particular uh, font, font selection. Um, kind of moving along here, um, I'm just going to go back to the eye. If I click just on the outside background, uh, again, really basic stuff here, but I just want to, you know, bring out the fact that, I mean, kids have just an all, just an unlimited amount of ways to kind of really just enhance this. And again, really that engagement piece, right? That multiple means of representation, expression. Um, kids can add comics, kids can add borders, kids can add emojis. There's just so many different things they can add. I'm just sort of looking at it and sort of feeling like it's maybe a little bit on the dull side. So I just wanted to kind of change that up a little bit. But um, moving back to that accessibility piece, if I re-highlight the text again, and once again, go into this, this um, I option, actually check that. If I go and select add, uh, and I want to add some more text, um, I want to point out the fact that there's also the capacity here to uh, insert an audio clip. So again, some of our kids might be typers, but for some of our kids, uh, they'd rather use their voice. Um, and so I'm just going to quickly kind of just model this, this particular one. So if I simply click the mic, bumblebees are important pollinators. So again, uh, it can just naturally embed, uh, it can just naturally embed any type of uh, a text, whether it's typing or whether it's me speaking. Um, oops, I'm just going to go back there for a minute. Um, additionally, additionally, there's the capacity here to um, insert hyperlinks. So if I go in, if I go into the actual image itself, and I once again click on that I, you'll notice that I can. Let's say if I found a, a website or I found a resource or I found a link that's going to further add information to, to add context to the image or speak to it maybe in a greater detail based on the learning goal than what I want to say as a learner, I can I can kind of point out that particular resource. So, um, you know, I found a quick YouTube link. Um, Dave Golson, in my spare time, I read a lot about bees, and so uh, this, guy's, this guy's good if you're interested in that kind of thing. Um, if I just simply enhance, just add that link directly in here, um, it will naturally be embedded uh, into the picture. And so um, to access that particular link though, I do have to be in uh, outside of edit mode and I have to be when this little, this little play icon option up here. So where I read the book. So if I select read book and I select read to me, I don't think you shared your sound, Nick, but that's not a big deal. No, that's good. Um, that's good. You know what? Um, Nick, click on the little settings icon for me for a second. So when you click on the settings icon, um, the read to me feature is excellent. And what I like about it, if you have them all clicked off like Nick does, um, you can see that it will automatically um, put the book side by side together, which makes it a little bit easier to read, which is a great feature. Some students, though, need a focus, and you might need to keep them on page five for whatever reason, so you can always click that off. Um, the changing the voice, uh, there's, I think, six different types of voice. There's a couple Canadian options. There's a male and a female. Again, some stu students have a preference depending on... Um, you know what they what they like obviously so nick just yeah pick anything you like doesn't matter to me yeah perfect is that richard yeah we love richard okay so now richard's <laughs> our, our voice um That's so good. you know what's in, you know what's important with um speech to text features is if a student requires it getting them uh on board and used to listening to a uh, speech to text feature. So like if Richard's the voice they want to listen to all the time and they want to take an assessment, Richard can be the voice they listen to on their assessment. So just getting them to practice um, intentionally listening to those speech to text will also help them on um, assessments. Some big ones like a PAT or a diploma, which they'll all have to take. Um, other things like highlight words. So if you've ever used the screen mask tool or if you've ever used the old school ruler on a page, um, the screen mask or the highlight words 
um, help students focus on what's actually being read. So if bumblebees, which is a very long word with a lot of vowels in it, is hard to pronounce, it highlights the word, they focus on it, and then it's read aloud for them. So that's a great feature. I would keep that one clicked in. Um, and then the uh, turn page automatically, again, if you want to have the ability to uh, read an entire book aloud, that's great. If you want them to focus on a specific page, then obviously you want them to have the ability to click the page themselves to go at their own speed. That definitely, depending on the profile of learner they are, that is definitely a feature you might want off because they might want to go a little bit slower. And then the speed at which the text is read is another great one. Uh, you have slow, medium, fast. They aren't really that different. I would suggest keeping it on slow because it uh, does give a little bit more processing time uh, for students who would require that. Medium's not bad either. I think fast is a little bit too fast for me personally, but hey, to each their own. I love Thanks, that. Man. Thanks, Antonio. And actually the purpose of why I went to the read to me aspect was the fact that I also wanted to, to, to demonstrate that hyperlink capacity. So we did insert that hyperlink. So if I actually just click, as you can see, my, my mouse turns into that little hand icon. If I click the image, it will take me directly to that, that YouTube clip that I selected uh, that can further enhance the image that was selected. That's so great. It's like bringing print to life. A textbook can't do that. <laughs> we can make more, uh, more meaning by putting in some of those other enhanced features. But there's other things that we can add that are, are really great for accessibility once we want to go to some of those interior pages. And, and we always say beyond print alone, I call it the trinity of accessibility, and that's images, audio, and video. And we can do all of those inside a book creator, right? Everything. And I think we really like just we really would just scratch the surface. I mean, there's there's a capacity. I mean, the beauty of a lot of I think, well, just in general, as, as teachers, I think we know this is that once we export a tool and spend two, three minutes on it, we think, oh, look, I added a color background, I added a picture, I added some text. This is so, you know. Whatever we know, typically we give it, we give that tool to our kids. They will Im almost instantly know tenfold, and they'll be yeah. showing us things. They'll be guiding us. And so, like, part of what I love about book, book Creator was that, you know, for me it was so user friendly. For me, it was so so easy to use. But you'll find that a lot of your kids will will take it to levels you didn't even realize that it it was capable of. Essentially, right? They'll they'll bring it. They'll they'll they themselves will. Um, you know, they'll they'll find tools within it that probably haven't even discovered and um, make their own types of meaning. Um, bring it to life. Bring it to life. Having said that, uh, I do want to point out the fact that uh, this is just scratching the surface, and the Book Creator website itself has tons of resources uh, within it. So um, when you actually go to the site, uh, right near the top where it says resources, There's endless examples of books that have been created in tools, whether you're elementary, middle school, high school, middle school, American, um, as well as subject, special ed, arts. There's just really an endless amount of resources, um, both general and really, really fine tuned. That's great. And so lots of like ideas for how we can use this tool across different subject areas, like both you and Antonio said, a universal tool for all of our students that we can put in the toolbox, but maybe perhaps a necessary accessibility tool for some. But I really love that special education section because there is a book completely in there on differentiation and book creator. And here it is. So uh, within that special education one, there's actually a, yeah, I like to just, just uh, like uh, Trish just mentioned, there's a differentiated learning book. Uh, and so if we actually open this book up, uh, it, it kind of talks about, um, it really ha it really takes us down that path of what UDL is um, and provides specific examples of how we can use Book Creator to show how we can represent our learning, how we can create engagement in our classrooms. Um, and so um, I'm just gonna kind of flip through some of the pages to kind of model some of the pieces that exist within Book Creator. So it talks about, so again, it kind of gives us the background, the brain science behind um, why we would, you know, how Book Creator, um, you know, supports these particular aspects of the UDL framework. Um, and then it goes into the why, and the why is so important. So how does the capacity to, you know, how, how does Book Creator support engagement? What are some of the different things within it, the accessibility features within it, um, support engagement as learners? That's so great. And then they give us some like examples, like ones that are made that we could pretty much take and use with our students. 
So I love, I mean, I'm a visual learner. And so usually when I see it, um, I think about my classroom itself and right away, it's like, well, I know the content, I know the learners in my classroom. It can be the springboard um, as, to, as to how I can target my instruction, how I can maybe visually display how the tool could be utilized and then turn it over to my kids. So you can see right here, um, some of the examples of the mediums for how it could be utilized. You can see a comic strip here. Um, this could be, you know, I guess a different, a, a distinguishing tool, right? So uh, mm -hmm. compare and contrast pot potentially. Um, choice boards um so and again actually should go into the next one i think in particular graphic organizers there we see an example of the frere model so it's just it's just um how it could be a collaborative tool so kids could you know partner up um so it's just it's it's really endless as far as the the it's not just to create books it's, right. it's, it's there's a number of ways we could actually use book creator Oh, that's fantastic. And I love that there's technology tips on the page. So if you want to learn how to um, use a shape to create that graphic organizer or lock an item, I love that those little tiny tutorials are right there on the page. So even the teacher doesn't have to be the expert. You can say, hey, kids, here's this book. Check out this page. Let's let's learn how to learn in order to help those students have some of that independence as well. And for ourselves as teachers to learn, you don't have to be an expert at book creator to give it a try with your students. That's so great. Well, and I love all of these examples. I love how you really helped us to realize the need, like Antonio said, for all, for all, for all. That's that universal design. And if we can make one little change that serves all, it keeps us from having to make, you know, 10 different versions of a lesson. So thank you so much for showing us this tool. I know we'll be very excited to go look in the idea bank for even more ways to use Book Creator. And uh, thank you everybody for watching and we'll see you in our next episode. Bye everybody. Thank you.